What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be continuing the series for X Defiant, where we're going through weapon class by weapon class, and just comparing the base stats with no attachments. Now, we've already covered assault rifles, SMGs, and pistols, so now it's time to move into the LMG category. And let's just start this off with our range and time to kill comparison. As you can see here, the RPK-74 is going to be a guaranteed 5-shot kill to the body at any range. However, it does have the slowest time to kill in the LMG category at 457 milliseconds. Then with the M60, we get a 4-shot kill potential out to 38 meters for the fastest time to kill potential in the LMG category at 360 milliseconds. Then after that though, it will drop off to a 5-shot kill. And then finally, with the M249, in our first two damage ranges, we're going to be getting a 5-shot kill to the body with a time to kill of 400 milliseconds, which is basically right in the middle. And it is also worth noting at range beyond that 42 meters, the M249 does kill the slowest here at 500 milliseconds with a 6-shot kill. Now all of that is just assuming you're hitting body shots, and it turns out headshots are quite powerful on most of the LMGs. With all of the LMGs, we get a headshot multiplier of 1.4, and this means with the RPK-74 and the M249 in the maximum damage range, both of these only require one headshot mixed in with body shots to cut that down to a 4-shot kill from a 5-shot kill, which is going to very noticeably improve our time to kill potential, so headshots out of the box are very, very powerful on those two guns. Whereas with the M60 in the maximum damage range, it's possible to get a three-shot kill, but every single bullet needs to hit their head. And while that time to kill potential is insanely good at 240 milliseconds, that's the type of thing that's probably not going to happen all that often. It's pretty difficult to land three consecutive shots to the head without ever missing your target or mixing in a body shot accidentally. So that's going to be a lot less consistent than the headshot potential with the other two LMGs. So with the M60, I'm generally just going to aim for the body. I'm not going to bother going for those headshots. Whereas with the other LMGs, it's definitely in your best interest to try to mix that headshot in whenever possible. Now, so far, we've just been talking about enemies with 100 HP. What about phantoms? Well, let's have a look at the chart here. And it turns out with all of the LMGs at every range, it's going to take you exactly one extra shot to kill against a phantom player. And therefore, these guns generally don't excel super well against Phantoms unless you're using the Heavy Barrel on the RPK or the M249. If you do that, you maintain that 5-shot kill potential against Phantom players, which is the same as regular players, and therefore you're essentially nullifying that extra health that the Phantom players will have. When it comes to the M60 though, this one just doesn't really excel against Phantoms. Of course, you can still use it against Phantoms and get kills against them. It's just not really going to excel against them. So that's going to wrap it up for all of our range and time to kill comparisons. Next, let's have a look at recoil. And in the case of the LMGs, I decided to just limit my recoil plots to 30 rounds, even though all of them have larger magazines than 30 rounds. And this just makes comparison, especially down the road with other guns, a lot easier. But as you can see here, the RPK has the lowest total magnitude of recoil, and it has a pretty standard recoil pattern for this game, where it kicks diagonally upward and a bit to the right. The M60, on the other hand, has the most recoil out of the LMGs, and this one kicks basically straight upwards for the first 10 or so shots that you fire, and then it starts to veer off a little bit to the left, which is a bit strange for this game. You don't see too many left-leaning recoil plots. However, we actually see a similar story here with the M249. We don't have quite as high of a magnitude of recoil as the M60, but it has a pretty similar behavior, where initially it's kicking essentially straight upward, and then it will start to veer off to the left a bit. And that's it for the recoil comparison. Just like with all the other guns in the game, recoil in this game is quite easy to predict and control, so none of these should really be a major issue for you. Next, let's get into our handling stats. And when it comes to aim down sight time, the RPK is 475 milliseconds, which is quite slow, but it's not the slowest. That title belongs to the M60 at 525 milliseconds. That is a painfully slow aim down sight time in this game. And then the M249 has an aim down sight time of 425 milliseconds, which is the fastest out of the LMGs, but still quite slow for this game. It's going to be significantly slower than SMGs and even assault rifles. Then when it comes to our sprint out times, by default, it actually matches the aim down sight time of the gun when it comes to the LMG, so that's nice and simple. But it is worth noting, these are very slow sprint out times as well, so you definitely don't want to be rushing around with these LMGs unless you're stacking heavy with attachments that it will help you to do that. After that, let's have a look at our base magazine capacities, which of course can be changed with attachments. But by default, the RPK-74 has the smallest magazine capacity at just 45 rounds, whereas the M60 and M249 have a 100 round capacity by default, which is interesting with these, because the expectation that I would have is that our aim down sight and sprint out time would be fastest on the RPK-74, since it's the lightest with the smallest default magazine capacity at 45 rounds. But that's not the case. The M249 has the fastest handling stats while maintaining a massive magazine capacity. 
Now in saying that though, our reload ad time will correlate very nicely to our magazine capacity as we can see here. Keeping in mind reload ad time just means the reload time without any unnecessary animation at the end. You can cancel out any animation after the rounds have appeared in the bottom right in your gun. And with the RPK, the reload time is much more along the lines of what you would see with an assault rifle at 2.02 seconds. Whereas with the M60 and the M249, these are both very significantly slower, painfully slow at just under eight seconds for a full reload. So that's not really unexpected at all. I just wanted to point out that if you are using the big 100 round magazines, it is gonna take you quite some time to get that reload finished. And you're really gonna have to take the time to plan those reloads out. But this just leaves us with one final set of stats I wanted to compare with the LMGs, and these are our movement speeds. When it comes to our base walking speed, so for standing up, walking at full speed without sprinting, the RPK-74 is the fastest at 3.95 meters per second, whereas the other two are at 3.84 meters per second. Keeping in mind that even with the RPK, this is quite a slow movement speed. You're going to be very noticeably slower than an assault rifle. Then when it comes to our sprint speeds, these are all just on a 1.5 times multiplier. So again, while the RPK is faster than the others, all of these are still quite slow relative to the other guns in the game. And it's the exact same story with our aim walking speed. This is on a 0.7 times multiplier from our base movement speed. And these values are very slow for LMGs, so you're not going to be able to strafe in gunfights nearly as effectively as other guns. Even when you stack attachments on to help with this, it's only going to help you so much with LMGs. And there we go, that's finally gonna wrap it up for the comparison of all of the LMGs that we've currently got in X Defiant. And when it comes to my thoughts on these, keeping in mind I don't have a ridiculous amount of playtime with the LMGs yet, I do spend most of my time doing a lot of testing and then leveling up the other guns, but with the fairly limited time that I've got with the LMGs so far, I definitely tend to lean toward the M249 as my favorite. I just find this to be the most forgiving, while also having the best handling stats in the LMG department, despite the fact that I've got a 100 round magazine on that. Headshots out of the box are super, super powerful with this. So you just need to land that one single headshot mixed in with body shots if you want to get a four shot kill. And it's also quite accurate as well. While it might not be quite as accurate as the RPK, I really don't have a problem with this small amount of recoil that it's got. So that's my personal favorite, but I've got to say the M60 can be quite solid as well with that really consistent four shot kill in the maximum damage range. You do actually get a very solid time to kill with this, but it doesn't tend to suit my playstyle that much due to its very slow handling stats. Now, perhaps once I get some more attachments unlocked on it, I will enjoy it a lot more than I currently am. And this just leaves us with the RPK-74, which unfortunately, it's just that gun where it's not horrible, it's certainly usable. I just feel it doesn't have a whole lot going for it relative to the other LMGs. Like sure, it's got faster mobility stats. It also doesn't have any range drop-offs to the body, so it'll be a consistent five shot kill at any range. But for the most part, my gunfights are gonna be taking place in the maximum damage range anyway with LMGs. It's also more accurate, but recoil really isn't a problem for me in this game, so it's not like that makes much of a difference for me. And as a result, I just find myself gravitating much more toward the other two LMGs. Now, of course, these are just my thoughts based on the stats, as well as my limited experience with LMGs so far. And this is where I'm curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. How do you feel about the LMGs in X Defiance so far? Which one is your personal favorite? Just let me know down below. And if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of this, I'm actually gonna create a playlist now and put all of my weapon comparisons there. And I will leave a link to that playlist in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.